In this lesson, we're going to look at how we would determine a quadratic inequality in one variable from a particular solution. Uh, before we do that, I'm just going to review how to come up with a solution given a quadratic inequality in one variable. So we're just going to review this problem. Uh, solve x squared minus 4 is greater than 0. Uh, one method of doing that is algebraically finding the boundaries of where x squared minus 4 equals 0. And if we factor that, this is the difference of squares, x plus 2 and x minus 2, and that will give us boundaries of x is equal to negative 2 and x is equal to positive 2. So if we were to add this onto the number line, the boundaries between where x squared minus 4 is greater than 0 and where it's not greater than 0 are the points negative 2 and positive 2, and those are non-inclusive because that's where it equals 0. Uh, then what we do is use test points. So if I use, for example, uh, the test point negative 3, this is just one of many methods to understand this. In the original, I would have negative 3 squared minus 4 greater than 0, which gets me 9 minus 4 greater than 0, which is a true statement. So this region here of numbers less than negative 2 would be solutions. Uh, if I substitute 0, what you'll notice is you'll get negative 4 greater than 0, which is not true. And if I substitute 3 into the original inequality, you would have 3 squared minus 4, which is 5, greater than 0, which is true. So this region here would also be a solution. Another way you could represent this solution, uh, symbolically speaking, would be this would be this region here would be numbers greater than 2. And this region here would be numbers less than negative 2. Or we could solve this from the related graph. Here's the graph of y is equal to x squared minus 4. So this question is asking, where is the function x squared minus 4 greater than 0? Well, you can see visually that the function is equal to 0 at negative 2 and 2, and it's greater than 0 to the left of or less than negative 2 and to the right of or greater than 2, which gets you the exact same solution. Uh, what we're doing in this lesson is the reverse, is given a solution, let's come up with the inequality. And we treat it kind of backwards in a way. Uh, for this next problem, we know uh, that you are, we might want to represent this on a number line, we know that your boundaries are negative 5 and 3, and they're non-inclusive. So this solution looks something like this between negative 5 and 3. Uh, the easiest way to begin this is by representing the boundary points from the related factors. So we know that the factor related to a boundary point of negative 5 is x plus 5, and the factor related to a boundary point of 3 would be x minus 3. So now all we need to do is figure out what the sign is related to 0. And in order to do this, what we can do is just take a test point from a solution region. Because we know, for example, that 0 is a solution, if I substitute 0 in for the variable, that will, de that will determine the inequality sign for me. So I'll just show you what that looks like. If I substitute 0 into here, what I will get is uh, 5 times negative 3 is somehow related to 0, or in other words, negative 15 is somehow related to 0. And in this case, we know that 0 is greater than negative 15, or negative 15 is less than 0. Uh, so our final solution, or in other words, the quadratic inequality that represents this solution, would be uh, x plus 5 times x minus 3, which represent the boundary points, less than 0. That's one way of doing this particular type of problem. Uh, you may be asked to put this into standard form, which would also be uh, x squared plus 2x minus 15 less than 0. Uh, let's do another one with fractions, but same kind of idea. Uh, in this next one, what you'll see is that the boundary points are inclusive at negative 1 half and also positive 7 quarters. And our solution region is less than negative 1 half and greater than 7 quarters. So in this particular case, we know that the uh, if you want to figure out what factor is related to this root, we could make this x is equal to negative 1 half, and then algebraically make one of the sides equal 0, because that would represent the root. So this would be uh, 2x is equal to negative 1. And if I add 1, I'll have that 2x minus 1 equals 0. So 2x minus 1 is the factor that represents that root. Uh, for this particular one, what I'm going to do is just state it. You could do the exact same thing, but it would be represented by 4x minus 7. So in this particular case, the quadratic inequality would be something like 2x minus 1, which is a boundary, uh, times 4x minus 7 is somehow related to 0. And we know that it's going to either be greater than or equal to or less than or equal to because the boundary points are inclusive. Uh, if I just take a test point from one of the solution regions, for example, I know that negative 1 is a solution. So if I put negative 1 into my supposed inequality, uh, it will determine the inequality sign for me. So I have 2 times negative 1 minus 1 
times 4 times negative 1 minus 7, somehow related to 0. And we would get in this particular case negative 3 times negative 11, somehow related to 0. In this case, 33 is greater than 0. So what we know is that the sign is going to be greater than or equal to, which means that the quadratic inequality to represent this is 2x minus 1 times 4x minus 7 is greater than or equal to 0. You could also do this from the graph. Um, let me just do one last one for you. This is kind of an interesting one. In this particular case, all it says is that it's all real numbers except not negative 3. So we know the solution looks like everything to the left and to the right uh, of negative 3. So what this means is that this is a unique uh, root, which means that probably what's happening in this particular case is the function Sorry, this should be at negative 3. Uh, the function is just touching negative 3. Okay, it's either opening up or opening down. Uh, in this particular case, it, it doesn't matter. But we know that the factors are going to be x plus 3 and x plus 3. Uh, so it's a single boundary point. So x plus 3, x plus 3. And we know it's either going to be greater than or less than, because it's not inclusive, something to do with 0. You can take any value from a solution region to determine your inequality. Uh, I'm going to take the number, for example, 0 tends to be the easiest one. So if I put 0 into here, what I'm going to have is 3 times 3 is somehow related to 0. And we all know that 9 is greater than 0. And since it's not or equal to in this particular case, uh, the inequality to represent this uh, would be x plus 3 times x plus 3 greater than 0. Or if you wanted to expand this, it would be x squared plus 6x plus 9 greater than 0. There's an inequality that would represent the solution that x cannot be negative 3.